Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Today we're starting off with a uh, relatively simple uh, craft. Um, this craft is basically meant to go into space to uh, basically just track comets. Yeah, um, it's going to be called Sentinel-1 and it will basically just go into space and track comets. Uh, this is a... Um, it's for... I believe integrated integrals, they're like our biggest, uh, con like we do the most contracts with them, uh, mostly because they do some, probably some of the easiest contracts. Uh, so yeah, um, I ended up building just a custom launch vehicle. I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to make a reusable version of this launch vehicle. So. Yeah, if you want to see a reusable version of this launch vehicle, make sure to, you know, hit subscribe to get updated with that. Uh, yeah, so this is Sentinel-1. It'll be uh, launched into a uh, solar orbit. It will basically uh, just track comets, track other things. Uh, we only get the contract, though, once we have tracked two comets. Uh, but I can just leave it up in space, and then I'll just randomly get a hey you finish this contract thing after a certain amount of time which is really nice because i i don't have to you know watch over it it's in a pretty elliptical well it will be in a pretty elliptical orbit uh, around the sun but uh here we go we finally um we're getting into our orbit here or yeah we just finally got our orbital injection no it was our circularization burn, we finally got that. And then I just decided, let me just use all the fuel on this stage to get into the uh, solar orbit. So yeah, that's basically what I plan to do here. Um, it's, it's not a very difficult thing to do to get into solar orbit, um, but I kind of wanted this to get pretty low. I wanted it to maybe get around the uh like the orbit of minmus uh just at some parts of the year just to make it have like a really interesting uh like kind of path around the sun uh yeah i thought that would be a good idea so yeah our our biggest problem with this even though it'll only take a day for us to reach our soi change um which is crazy, we're just rocketing out of this, uh, this sphere of influence, because it takes like 16 days to reach Minmus, and just because of how fast we're flying, we're gonna only gonna get there in like, two days. Or way past it, in less than a day. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll lose track of it, um, so... I have to send up this satellite, um, which will be a, solely a communicator to that satellite. It will serve no other purpose other than to talk to Sentinel-1. Um, it'll be called Sentinel-Com-1, uh, I believe, and it'll be launched up with a, literally just a rocket that's an SRB. Yeah, Sentinel-Com-1. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty simple rocket. It uh, it just flies off the pad also look at all the stabilization wings I had to put on it because it was kind of top heavy so it kind of flies through the air like a dart um, I needed the little stabilization wings there so it doesn't like flip out because I, I it, if I didn't put those there um, as soon as as soon as it disconnects it flips like crazy and actually even before then it would flip like crazy so yeah, it's a pretty quick uh, travel to orbit on this uh, little uh, little device. But what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to bring it up to a geostationary orbit, which should uh, keep us in contact with, um, you know, most of uh, well the Sentinel One for a good portion of the time. Um, believe I will make a second Sentinel satellite and I'll send it up there, or Sentinel-Com satellite to also 
communicate with Sentinel-1 uh, just so, you know, it's easier. Uh, so we have, like, communication all the time. Uh, I do not believe that this satellite will always be in contact, especially when it reaches Moho, but that's not really a problem. Um, Alright, so this is Mun BN1. Um, this is a contract to uh, do some research in an elliptical orbit over the Mun. Um, it's being done by... Uh, it's a mission for some, some company. I, I don't always remember the names of the companies. Uh, but it's a mission for a company that needs us to do a magnometer and a an, uh, radio plasma wave scan over the Mun in a low orbit and a high orbit, and it needs to be in that orbit for a hundred days. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it in an orbit for a hundred days, and that's all we like really need to do. So, all right, so as you probably noticed, when we first, well, when we launched this craft, there was an explosion um, on the lower stage. So what I found out is that there is, that we, we just need a new um, minimal lift launch vehicle because um, this, this launch vehicle is really prone to failure. Um, so I need to fix this vehicle. Or just get a new one altogether. Actually, I think I should probably just get a new one altogether. So here we are. Um, we're almost. Well, we're gonna make our way to the Mun. But yeah, I th I think with the new vehicle, what I'm going to do, like I said earlier in this episode, is I'm going to make it reusable. It'll be just a light launch vehicle, but it will be. I think I can get it to be fully reusable, um, with you know light refurbishment. So, um, I think, I think that'll be, that'll be the goal for our next vehicle. And I think, I think that's what I will do for, uh, the second half of next episode, because I've already recorded half of next episode and next episode will focus on the Duna mission. So yeah, uh, the second half will be focused on, uh, that and a new launch vehicle i guess so yeah make sure you're subscribed to see that um or you know just catch back up with me or just you know watch the reddits or whatever um yeah so i should be able to make a pretty reliable launch launch vehicle um that'll be reusable which will really help you know costs and things like that because if you didn't know in ksb having a reusable vehicle like if it lands back down on the surface you can recoup quite a bit of cost um so yeah hopefully hopefully we'll be able to do that and also the closer you get it to the the ksc the more uh the more uh, money you'll get back so i want to uh really uh you know recoup a whole lot of funds there it'll make this way cheaper i'll have to do less contracts which means i can do more of what i need to do which is get ourselves to all of the planets all right this is min bien oh one it's from the same con it's from the same company as last time um different uh different you know set see look at that you just saw the failure that is why i'm doing the uh the new uh launch vehicle so the, the, failure, the failure happens pretty late on, but it's also not great to have a failure on your rocket. Like, yeah, you shouldn't need, you re need to rely on Gimbal to like save your rocket. It's not, not great. Um, granted, you know, things like uh, Starship and all of that will have engine out capability and technically it does have engine out capability. But I'd prefer if all the engines ran most of the time and didn't have a 100%... I'd prefer if that engine didn't have a 100% failure rate. You know what I mean? Um, 
because it seems to blow up every time I launch this rocket, no matter what happens. So. Yeah. Um, we're going to make our way out to uh, Minmus in just a short, you know, uh, what is it? Transfer burn. I always forget the names of the burns. I'm like, I'm so sorry about this, but yeah. After a short burn, it'll make its way to Minmus, uh, and from there we'll put it in an orbit, and then what all we need to do is get magnometer scans and a R RSP scan. Uh, actually, no, it's just to transfer data from Minmus. So, like, I just brought the same satellite up there. It was a pretty cheap satellite. Um, that's all we needed to do. And yeah, uh, I thought it was pretty, you know, easy. You know what I mean? So yeah, uh, as soon as we reach Minmus, we're gonna do a orbital insertion burn and bring ourselves there. And that's it. I don't think I actually caught that. Holy shit, why didn't I show that? Well, there we go. That's that's the end of the that's the end of the episode. Um, if you really liked it, please make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.